I have called for this presser as the national coordinator for Zimbabwe Citizens Forum. As you all know, uh, the issue which is trending in social media and print media, uh, in look for parties wherever, the issue of corruption. I saw it fit to add my voice on uh, issues of corruption since we are also from the civic society and our main mandate is to know Of this land, wake up and smell the coffee. 
we are proud with our teachers who for effect manage to impart knowledge to all Zimbabweans so that we become experts in survival skills. Some of our brothers and sisters through this education system have acquired knowledge enough to mislead Westerners to the extent of siphoning funds from them under the guise of wanting to remove the elected government. Year in, year out, they born a new breed of activists who towards, who forward the proposals to some hostile embassies for funding to cause chaos and uh, with intention to seize the government. And these are clever ones. Who once the funds arrive, they just spend 5% of the funding to cause a flash demos. The rest, they take to their homes and upgrade their personal lives. The problem then is to those who front those flash demos and the benefit of the organizer. Teachers, you need to wake up and start to question the ability of R2. Till when shall you be used as a constituent under representation when the man is doing it all for his personal benefit? What have you so far benefited from R2? With this current rate of unemployment, who exactly is being represented by the CTU? But why have we become objects of evil individuals? Are you not aware that calling of illegal demonstrations is what brings food on the tables of the people like Rashid Mahia, Peter Mtasa, and Obde Masarawe, among others? For these illegal protests, invites attention of the law enforcement. Obviously, in maintaining law and order, lawful arrests are effected. Then Zimbabwe lawyers for human rights comes in, led by one Beatrice Mtetwa and crew to represent the violators. And also they are allocated funding for that. And during this protest, illegal protest, they sponsor confusion, they sponsor violence, Injury is okay. Enter Zimbabwe Doctors for Human Rights. They also benefit from that. But as citizens of Zimbabwe, what's there for us? As teachers, what's there for you? I also call for these Westerners and advise them to go back to the drawing board and also to be clever enough and take an audit of how much they have lost to these evil, clever Zimbabweans since 1999. Westerners are parting ways with millions of dollars after they are made to believe that the government will be overthrown. Anyway, Zimbabwe will never run short of forex for as long as diplomatic banks are still coming. Because these brothers and sisters of ours who are siphoning those dollars will bring them in the streets. To some extent, maybe it's a benefit to us. But now, I'm going to the aspect of corruption direct. And I am quoting the Private Voluntary Organizations Act, as it says. For those who saw our advert, I was saying, clean the mirror for better view. I understand the civic society organizations are in watchdogs to the government. They are whistleblowers. Whenever they have a reasonable suspicion that a crime commission, a, a, a crime was committed, they raise alarm. They ring bells. They put the government to task in terms of accountability. Now they are a mirror. We also need the civic society organizations, as the one that I have mentioned, to come out clean, to be audited, and to declare the assets that they possess. We recently, civil servants, uh, received an increment in uh, a $75 a US dollar as promised by the government. The CTU are on the front attacking the government to say it's nothing. And for a fact, I doubt if Obed Masarawa is a teacher himself. So more so if he is a lord. But we need also to inspect on how much are the CTU employees any? When Obed Masarawa was at the American Embassy, for a fact, he got something. Are they receiving US dollars before starting to blame the government itself? ZCTU, for effect, as I said, unemployment rate is very high. But they are earning money. They are managing to rent offices.
They are managing to fuel their cars. Even they are going to the extent of buying new vehicles. We understand they are getting money from uh, uh, we have the big organization like the ILO, International Labour Organization, which is a political. Are these people accountable? Before they start pointing fingers at others, this is the only truth in the, some level of uh, corruption which are uh, feared and failed to be exposed. Why? Maybe because he comes from, he emanates from that field. Maybe he himself needs also to be accountable. Besides the issues of the Graca Macheo scholarship fund where he was found offside, he may be having other issues. So the corruption that we are talking here is that. As watchdogs, I come from the civil society also. The PVO Act says a registered PVO, a registered non government organization, is this one. You have an obligation to yearly submit audited accounts done by a registered public auditor, as the government does through the Auditor General. They should submit annual reports of activities. In 2019, we had one, two, three, four activities. We received so much, and that man we spent it this way. But we haven't yet yet any civic society doing that. And I wonder why the regulating authority, which is the Ministry of uh, Social Welfare, under the PVO board, why are they not taking these civic society organizations to task in terms of accountability? And civic society organizations, people have confidence in us. And if, to maintain that confidence, we must show that we are clean ourselves. Furthermore, if the PVO, if the organization fails to do so, the registrar can deregister such organization. And then we have that with the police, and they are trying by all means to act non partisan We are witnessing arrests of high profile people, like ministers, like you know, body directors and staff. I'm also calling them not to give a blind eye uh, to this union. The other problem that we have is where you see this is very, very bad corruption. Civic society organizations should bring forward their database. If it's an organization that is representing teachers as I choose, we need to see their database. Who are the teachers? You agree with me that uh, towards the election, maybe all of you, you came across this, there are organizations like the Youth Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe Peace Project, they just send you a message to say, whenever you notice violence, report to us. You don't know where they got your number. I assume maybe we are all members of such civil society organizations, but we are not away. I also assume maybe the same data is used by the CPUs, the same that we find in R2. Since they represent raw teachers, we need a proper database to say, right, this is our database. This is Mr. Kadisha, a teacher at Shematuri. How much are they subscribing? They subscribe so much per month. These are our accounts. This is how we spend money. Because for a fact, we have seen this trend. Databases of these civic society organizations are bogus. People who are said to be members are not even aware that I am a member. They are associated with that civic society organization by force behind the back. They are not aware. Is that not corruption? Is that not some kind of abusing people's rights? Because I have my right to associate with a certain church or a certain organization. After fully understanding what that organization represents, but because these organizations need to, 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 to ask for funding, they can have a database of one million people. Then they say to donors, we have one million people. One million people, you are all there, I'm also there, but I don't know. Now when the funding is being released, it's released in my name, but I'm not away. The fund gets here in Zimbabwe. They sponsor a flash demo. Maybe if they receive 100,000 US dollars, they only spend 1,000 US dollars. 99,000 is taken, they construct houses where people who does not have employment history, but they now own properties. There's houses, and you know those people who might not call by names. Where is that? Where is police? Where is the ministry? Furthermore, you know there are those that are called the Financial Action Task Force. You know there is specific recommendations. They were put in place uh, to keep money laundering and financing, financing of terrorism and proliferation. Article 8 stipulates that countries should review 
the adequacy of laws and regulations that relate to non-profit organizations which the country has identified as being vulnerable to terrorist financing abuse. Countries should apply focused and proportionate measures in line with the risk-based approach to such non-profit making organizations to protect them from terrorist funding abuse that includes by terrorist organizations posing as legitimate entities by exploiting legitimate entities as conduits for terrorism financing including for the purpose of escaping asset freezing measures and by concealing or obscuring the clandestine diversion of funds intended for legitimate purpose to terrorist organizations. Now we have ZCTU, we have R2, we have Christ in Zimbabwe Coalition, we have Youth Zimbabwe Trust, we have Lawyers for Human Rights, we have Doctors for Human Rights. We are not saying they are financing terrorism. But altogether, I'm not saying they are not financing terrorism. What needs to be done in line with the FATIC recommendations? There should be a thorough audit. Maybe the donors are giving the money in Centuries to say, no, go and do the humanitarian work. But maybe they are diverting. Each time the Zimbabwe Congress for Trade Union calls for a demonstration, they call for a demonstration of a violent nature. Each time R2 calls for a demonstration, they make sure they involve an element of violence. Is that not terrorism? Each time Christ in Zimbabwe coalition comes in to call for demonstration, you, have, you should know that the demonstrations will not end peacefully, and we have been seeing this for quite a long time. Now we need we, we, we need those uh, international organizations and those countries to know that some of the money they are sending here in Zimbabwe is not put to the use intended, but is being diverted to terrorism. People are being bought uh, beer and stuff to stone buildings to attack others. Demonstrations are no longer done peacefully. Right now we are in the era of, of COVID-19. Essential services, what are essential services? They are, they are very key people. They should be given an opportunity to work. We have nurses, we have doctors who are being forced or pushed into demonstrations by people who are not nurses, by people who are not doctors. And here I'm talking of people who earn a living out of those demonstrations. They don't work anyway. What our doctors, nurses, and teachers are forgetting is that when Masara Ure calls for a demonstration, happening of that demonstration is his job. When Masara Ure is saying teachers don't go to work, he is actually doing his work, so he is not absent from his job. When the city who is saying don't go to work, Peter Mkasa is doing his work and is paid for that. The level of response by you workers to boycotting work determines the amount of money he's getting. The level of violence that innocent Zimbabweans are influenced to do determines the amount of wage and reward given to these people. But at the end of the day, these guys are taking money to their homes. What is there for us as Zimbabweans? The government made an increment which, which is not satisfactory. To, to, to the intended beneficiary, it's a fact. But at least there is an input. What's coming from r for teachers? What's coming from ZCTU for teachers? But these guys are leaving. So we need these organizations to be accountable. I repeat, one, all civil society organizations operating in Zimbabwe should produce database which is up to date so that we know if it's an organization that, uh, that represents nurses. Monday is a rapid database. Can I match teacher? Match teacher rapid database. Number two, financial account. We need to be transparent. As Zimbabwe Citizens Forum, our account is with the Steward Bank. This is what we got in 2019. This is how we spend it. We registered saying we want to do one, two, three things. We also need to review uh, on whether the organization is sticking to the mandate on its constitution. And in these other organizations also, there is no democracy. Democracy is lacking in the sense that some people is the founder of the organization and is the president of that organization. And the organization does not have an, have an office. It's a briefcase organization. And there are no elections in terms of change of leadership in that organization. And those organizations only resurface when maybe it's election time. 
We call the government to assist us. And we call you members of the 40 state journalists to probe and see where funding of a certain organization is coming from and how it is being spent. Regionally, we have chaos in Mozambique, uh, Cabo de Ogado province. There are terrorists there with the level of yet that other Zimbabwe gave. And uh, given the long political history between Zimbabwe and Mozambique, maybe this organization, some of these organizations, are the vehicles that are transmitting funding in, in, in Mozambique. So we call government, we are going to engage the police, we are going to engage that and civic society to make sure that we portray an innocent and clear image to the citizens of Zimbabwe to say we are clean. Therefore, we have reasonable grounds to call for sanity in whatever sector of, 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 of economy, be it the government, be it the private sector. So this is part of the truth that uh, uh, our brother, Woko Ochimono, failed to address and ended up, uh, maybe I can say he failed, he exposed or he addressed the issues that he felt uh, were at stake, maybe the issues that he had access to. But we need audit, even on media houses, even at schools. But for now, let's focus on civic society organizations who are funding them. We might be sitting on a time bomb. We might be having these other guys being funded to sponsor terrorism. Maybe there are people who are, whom they are training somewhere else. So let's be transparent. This is our call. This is what we ought to know and failed to expose that in the civic society organizations there are no financial books. That there are briefcase organizations that are being run by individuals, for example, you Zimbabwe Trust. And also, it is not allowed in the act to, to be led by an individual animal criminal record. But across the board, the civic society move, animal criminal records, and as cheap as we could do. Let's audit ourselves so that we become a better mirror. I thank you so much, and I hope you will uh, forward this uh, this uh, good news to almost everybody for a better Zimbabwe, for a better nation, for better development. And I also hope my brother, uh, the, the two brothers whom I have mentioned, Peter Mtasa and Obed Masawe, are ready to issue out their databases and to justify uh, the funds that uh, uh, they are using for a living. If there are questions uh, that pertain to the press, uh, feel free to uh, ask the question. Embarking soon, we are starting to embark on a, a nationwide tour, which is not offensive, which is not illegal, to try and equip our workers with knowledge that they must not allow any un unemployed person to encourage them to demonstrate. All these guys I have mentioned here, they are unemployed, and they lack employability as a character and an attitude. And those are the people who are coming from the streets to go and say, Teacher, Makasunga Chai, don't go to work, and the teacher is listening. I encourage our teachers to see a raw student as out of the school. Whenever you see a person coming to you and say, demonstrate his violence, you know that I'm not going to say that about my teacher. Tora him one of the rest of the class. I also encourage nurses. Whenever you see a person coming to you and say, whatever any criminal you are given is nothing, let's demonstrate. You must see a patient, not an activist. Take that person. Move a counseling. Move a serious. My doctor said, do the same. These guys are not, are not normal. They, must, they mustn't be giving you uh, instruction. So teachers should see students, nurses should see patients, and uh, doctors as well should see uh, patients who are in serious cases. I think, Madam? Are you saying the Muslims are not um, clear enough of what they need as a reason why to be influenced by other people to either demonstrate or call upon government to increase their salary? Oh, all I'm saying is, Zimbabweans 
they know what they want. The only problem is they only act. It may be coincidence. They act when somebody raises the issue. So they know what they want. But there are people who are being at the front to try and mobilize them to act. Maybe it's coincidence that if you want to act tomorrow, then somebody else cannot remember my chances. Maybe the guys are chances. They know our plans, they know who are pinned All I'm saying is Zimbabwe knows what they want. But there are people who are using Zimbabwe. And you answered well. Any more questions? And can you also provide a, a database of your membership? Yes. That's why I said, uh, in my example, I said SCC, SC, Zimbabwe Citizens Forum. What you need to do, we have the regulating authority, which is the registrar. Uh, as I said, the Minister of Social Welfare, we have the PVO board. We are going to them. We are giving them the letter. To say, invite us all. We are ready, even to start with us in the Public Citizen Forum. Even if time is right, we are going to put it in the database, and we are going to put it right in. And you need to call each and every person who writes, are you a member of the Public Citizen Forum? Are you a member of the Public Citizen Forum? Yes, I am. So we are ready. In fact, we will start. And nobody, and for no other reason, but no, ah, pana, just in that way, it's changing. Maybe for interest, sake, for interest, sake, I would like to ask. Uh, you mentioned something that you wanted to look at who is uh, funding these NGOs or civil societies. Could I maybe ask who is actually funding your civil society as well? Yeah, as I as I say, uh, I'm not saying those civil society organizations should invite you as a journalist and say we are being funded by who. That's why I'm making an appeal to the regulating authority. And with the time after we go there, maybe we are interviewed, we expose all our links and stuff, you will see it in the public domain. We will make sure it's published. In the same way, what it is reported by what is the general is published. So you will get to know. But who is funding you to be on the record? To be on the record. Journalists are asking a question, who is funding you? To be on the record. Since you, you are saying it should be led by principles of transparency and accountability, mm -hmm. who is funding you? No, your question is very clear. I repeat, everything should be done procedurally. You agree with me that the pressure is procedural. Why is it procedural? Because I have done it for months. You will get to know all that. Right now, you can't go to the city and say, who is funding you? They won't respond to you. We will do it in a very good way. Maybe my newspaper, page one, page two, the CTU, page three, page four, you'll get to know all this. Thank you. 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 But also, if teachers or teachers as we are moving around, who doesn't even know uh, among the many people teachers in Zimbabwe? If teachers, who, who, who doesn't even understand how it functions, the role of teachers, in short, they should be a database. They should be projects because our social funding is able. I thank you all for coming to this presser. Stay safe and uh, be well till we meet again as soon as possible.